Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going through my VCT 2024 Pacific tier list. Um, I did not say that in the right order, but I'm going to roll with it. We're going to go through all 11 teams, rank them in order in tiers here of how I think they'll do throughout the year. Um, this is a full year tier list. This is not going to be just for the opening event. I might redo the tier list um, just for that. Um, like I might do another one closer to the kickoff event for every um, every region um also do predictions there but i'm going to be doing a full world power rankings next video um so stay tuned for that and i'm going to be updating both the regional lists and the whole world um throughout the year except for china um i don't know enough about china right now i'm going to try to kind of follow it but it'll be in and out kind of thing i'll do it every now and then when i get to watch the games but Overall, I'm probably not going to be able to, um, but yeah, um, leave a like and subscribe if you guys enjoy. Leave a comment on how you would rank these teams and what you think of my rankings. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so we're going to start in this bottom tier here, not the need to see logos tier, um, but the bad tier. Um, we're going to start at number 11 with Global Esports, who definitely had an interesting offseason. Um, they dropped the whole roster and bring in a completely new roster with Polvi, Lightning Fast, Russ, Blaze King, and Ben Kai. And when you bring a roster in like that, you'd expect Ben Kai to be the one IGLing, but it ended up being Russ. And we haven't seen this whole team play. And I think despite their poor performance at um what's it called? Uh, the one tournament they played. I literally see it on their VLR page here. Convergence. Um, I think they'll probably end up being better than that, and they'll probably win some games here. Um, and I think Benkai coming back into that um, group will help them a lot, just to have his like calling aspects there, even if he's not IGLing. Um, I think he's definitely going to be able to help Russ out. Uh, Polvi looks like a eh, duelist player. I have him rated pretty low within Pacific um, just because there's so many good duelists. Yeah, I have him rated 11th actually. Um, just because there's so many like mid duelists in Pacific that he ends up just getting put below most of them because he's not proven. Um, Blaze King, I do actually like. I don't like him as much on the initiator. I think he would be better on Sentinel if they just decided, you know what, Benkai. We're not going to sign you, or you could just put Benkai on the initiator and let Blaze King play the Sentinel. Which, again, I think he's better at the Sentinel than Benkai. I think he's better on Sentinel than he is on the initiator. It's just kind of confusing to me why they picked the roles in that way. That could end up getting changed mid season and going a different way, but I, I don't expect this team to get too many wins this year. Um, also, Lightning Fast, they've been rumored to be cutting before the season starts. I don't know exactly what's happening there. Um, because I feel like if it was going to happen, it would have happened already. Um, but yeah, overall, I just, I don't think this team will go win this. I don't think they'll be by far the worst team as they're in a tier with two other teams here. Um, but I don't think they're going to be very good at all. And I think they'll probably end up being the consensus worst team, but it's definitely possible it's someone else. Next up here, we have DFM, um, the reigning winless champs. Um, who, I mean, consensus worst team from last year uh, in any region. They were just awful. They could never get like anything going. They just had no identity. They had no superstar player. They had no, not even a bright spot anywhere. Um, maybe other than Suggest, you could argue. But um, I don't even think he was a bright spot last year. Um, but they bring in a uh, Crazy Raccoon Core of May, uh, Papagachi and Neth. I believe Jojo was from Fennel. Yeah, well, I didn't know exactly that he was from that team, but I knew he was not Crazy Raccoon. Um, this team did not do well in the offseason, um, I will say. The one tournament they played, they looked pretty bad as a team, but I do believe in some of the pieces here in May. I do like Jojo. I think was probably the best option if you're going to be picking up an IGL in Japan. Um, Neth, I think, is okay. Suggest played eh, decently. So I think they have pieces here to build into next year. Um, I rated their offseason decently. 
Um, but I just I still don't think this team is going to be good this year. And then the other team that I have in this tier is Talon, who originally I really like this roster. You have Governor, who I think has extremely high potential and is the exact kind of duelist player you, you want to build up. Can play Jet, can play Arrays, can op at a high level. Pretty much everything you want to, to help develop a player um, or to start with developing a player, obviously. Um, Jet Boys is a solid Sentinel. Jesus. Ugh. Lene, I think, is an okay initiator player. I didn't, I haven't seen too much from him. Um, Ban, I'm actually fairly high on as a player. I think he can perform pretty well in the flex role here. And Cruz, as an individual, I think is very good on smokes. Eh, as an IGL, I'm not too big on that. But he does return to the role where he was performing best and the team was performing best um, that he was playing at the beginning of the year. Um... I do like this roster. It's just the one offseason event they played was so incredibly bad that I couldn't even watch it to try to figure out if Lene was good or not. So I kind of just took what I knew from him from the game he played last year and just maybe a little bit of other stuff from that game um, and kind of put him at the bottom. Obviously, he has a lot of room to go up. I'm going to be updating these player rankings that I have throughout the year. I'll probably make a video on them. At least, I'll definitely tweet about them. Um, I tweeted my initial EMEA ones that I did at the start. I've updated them since then, especially with the roster changes and everything. Um, but yeah, I'll figure out what I want to do with that. Um, and yeah, I just, I think there's potential here for this roster. I think they'll have some pieces going into next year, but... Jesus, that offense offseason event was so bad and really, really worried me. Um, as kind of a fan of this team. So yeah. And then next up we have our could sneak into playoffs tier. These are teams that I don't think are quite playoff caliber, but could maybe get some wins here or there to kind of pass up some of these teams above them and maybe be able to sneak in at the end of the playoffs. Um like at the end of the regular season, into the playoffs over some teams that might be better than them. Um, so at number, I think this is eight. I got to go check my actual rankings. I don't know why I closed that. Um, yes, at number eight, we have Team Secret. Um, a team that I was extremely high on last year. I predicted them to win LCQ. Uh, I had them rated fairly highly, at least at the end of um, the VCT Pacific regular season. Uh, I rated them highly most of the year, like except when they took that dip mid-season. I thought they were like, I was very worried, um, but then they came back out and beat DRX and everything just kind of went back to normal. I think this team will be very solid all year, and I do actually very much like the fact that NDG is coming in to play Sentinel rather than to play Duelist. I that's what I originally thought, but Jeremy's gonna be playing the Duelist here, and I like that a lot better. Um, and yeah, I think the rest of the team is solid. Envy is an incredible flex player. I think he'll continue to get better, continue to break out here. Um, and yeah, just be a fairly solid team. That's going to beat some, beat the bad teams below them. They'll get these three wins. I guarantee you, and maybe one or two more above with some teams above them here, but overall, meh. Like they're, it's just a bunch of mid. I don't, I don't know what they could have done differently in the off season, um, but I just think other teams kind of passed them up. Now, I do think there is a definite possibility of teams above them, kind of falling below them. Um, I don't think they're necessarily going to pass people up, if that makes sense. Like they're not gonna, they're not going to be the ones outperforming what they expect, what I expected them. Um, I mean, what I expect of them is that, but like, they're not going to be the ones getting crazy wins that they shouldn't or anything like that. It's going to be these teams losing games that they shouldn't, um, in my opinion. And speaking of a team that could lose a lot of games, they shouldn't. That's not the right team. Uh, I think people would have been very upset at that. Um, I have Gen G at number seven, who I originally had it like 10th before I knew that Texture was going to be the one playing Duelist here. 
And my God, does that make a difference? I am so incredibly high on texture as a player. Um, he, I mean, I've been high on him ever since his Damo and Kia days. Like, he was the one Korean player that I, like, went out of my way to watch. Um, or just non a player in general. And, yeah, he's so much fun. I really like him. I feel like Munchkin has been a decent piece in this team. Um, kind of just being like that Viper player that the t that every team is having now, like T1 with Rossi. Um, I mean, EG's rumored roster, you got, um, what's his face, Apoth. Like, they have two Smokes players. Um, I guess Sentinels doesn't really have it as much, but um, C9, I guess, with, uh, with Whippy can kind of be their Viper player. And then, or Vanity, I guess. Vanity would be that. Sorry. Um, and yeah, just in general, kind of just having that Viper player that can just play it on every map if you need it, because that agent is so incredibly overpowered. Um, I think Meteor is going to be good on Sentinel. I don't know how good, but it, putting him on that role is going to kind of rein him in and not have him overheat as much, which I do like a lot more. Obviously, it could make him a little bit uncomfortable, but he didn't look that bad on it in the um, Convergence uh, tournament that they played. So I think that was pretty good. Karen seems like a very good find by this team, um, I think. I mean, he was a complete unknown before I watched him, but now I have him rated as my sixth highest smokes player in Pacific, which is very high praise because this region has a lot of good smokes players. Um, and then, yeah, Lakia, who I thought was going to be pretty bad. Uh, it's just going to be kind of average here. I think I overestimated how bad he would be. Um, he seems like the same player that played in tier two. I thought he would kind of get a little bit of the tier two tax where he would play worse, but I feel like overall he's kind of played better, um, which is a good sign. So yeah, overall, I think this team could outperform some people's expectations, but they also could flop and finish like ninth or 10th. Like there is a wide range of outcomes with this Gen G team. So I'm going to try to put them in the middle of where I think um, they could land. All right. And now we're on to our should make playoffs tier. And we'll start with bleed at number six. Now, I think this is another team that things could go very right for or very wrong. You could have Ye returning to his original form um some like something like that could just get this team up to like second at worst um you got darion who is kind of a question mark kind of switching over to a more flex style role um that i'm not exactly sure how he's going to perform on i've seen him on sentinel i've seen him a bit on duelist i like him on both of those roles and if they're going to play more double duelist stuff here i think that's good um but overall there is a little bit of doubt there with him. Crazy guy, I think, is a great IGL and a great individual player. I don't have any concerns with him. Um, Egoist, I don't think is the greatest player. Um, I have him rated as my fourth highest Sentinel player in Pacific, but that's including Devai as a Sentinel player. Um, just because I have... In these rankings, I have... Um, like... The five categories, Duelist, Sentinel, Initiator, Flex, Smokes. And I have to put one player from each team in each role. I kind of force myself to do that. So it kind of messes with the rankings a little bit. Um, and I just rated Devi as a player, so he's number one. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep referring to this, even though I, I'm going to make a video on it, probably. Um, and yeah, I think he's he's going to be fine, but I don't think he's going to like be a great player for this team or anything. Now, if he ends up playing more of the Viper stuff and Ye goes on to more Chamber and Darion stays on Duelist, that could also be a thing um, that propels this team. But I think the player that is going to have to carry this year and their best player, even if Ye kind of gets back in form, I think if he gets fully back in form, he's obviously their best player. But Scary is so incredible. Um, he is one of the best smokes players in the world. I suggested that, um, 
back in like champs 2022 and people called me crazy that he's one of the best smokes players in the world like i'd suggest that he was better than mind freak back then and i don't think it's particularly close right now um, like i know mind freak is kind of had just had a good really good champs but every other tournament he played he was kind of mid and i think he'll kind of be that um i think he'll have one tournament a year where he goes crazy um, but i don't think he's ever gonna be a consistently great player let alone a consistently elite player like scary will be um and yeah just too many good things to say about scary um a lot of the rest of the roster has questions though so i can't really rate them that highly then at number five we have rrq another team with an extremely high ceiling um you got gemkin coming in here who i was pounding the table for in the offseason i thought he was so so good um can play jet raise op all that kind of stuff the op is eh, i'm not huge on it uh, on his opping but as an entry player he is up there with some of the best in pacific i think you got something buzz saya dep that are definitely ahead of him and then i think he's five and i don't think it's particularly close after that um he's just so good uh, elmy moore is going to play I mean, he's going to be pretty good on the Sentinel here. Nothing incredible, but he'll do it. Like, I don't know. I don't I don't think he was super, like, super good last year, but I thought he was fine, you know? Like, he'll be a solid piece and a decently consistent piece for this team. Um, won't, like, lose you games, but won't win you them. Uh, kind of similar to how I was talking about um, Egoist. Uh, Estrella. Kind of the same thing on Initiator. Um, I do like him. He was probably my favorite player from that, uh, what's it, the D plus Kia roster that I watched in Ascension. I watched a lot of their games. Uh, Flipshooter, I believe is the IGL here. I sometimes forget. Why did I close out of their BLR tab? Um, whoa, I am way off. What am I talking about? I mean, Zephro still very solid. Wait, am I stupid? Hold on. Let me let me do some research real quick. Okay, so I didn't read the roster wrong, or I didn't forget. I just read the roster that I had written down wrong. So I knew everything. I just completely confused myself. So everything's figured out. Um, Zephro is the IGL here. He's gonna be playing smokes. I think he's a solid individual. I don't. I think he's going to wow you as well. Um, I think his IGLing will get better uh, as we're going to go along here, especially with better teammates here. Um, with Jemkin, I'm assuming Estrella as well will be better. Um, and then Flipshooter is a great flex player as well. Um, that will definitely help this team a lot. Um, sorry for the confusion there. I do really like RRQ. I think this team has a lot of upside um, to be potentially like great in the future i don't think they'll be it right away i think they could also just end up kind of flopping um but i think they'll continue to build on what they did last year and then next year they'll continue to build on what they did this year i have a lot of faith in this team um to kind of in the eventual future be great um and yeah that's all i really have to say about them and next up we have drx and I think some people are going to overreact and put them like 7th, 8th, and ninth in that range. And while I do think they had a poor offseason, I do think they had to make changes as well. They bring in Flashback and Foxy9. Foxy9 to play the Flex and Flashback to play Sentinel instead of RB and Zest. Now... I think Stax has looked his best when he's on Initiator, on the Sova, on the Sky, on the Fade, stuff like that. I think Buzz has looked his best on Duelist. Um, I think his best peaks have been on Duelist. I think he's been more consistent on the Sentinel, in my opinion. I would have liked to them for them had having to pick up like a Korean jet player, like Texture or something. That's what I had them doing in the off season. Um, wait, no. No, I had them picking up Foxy, I think. 
keeping Foxy. Maybe not. I don't remember. Um, at least that's what I would have done. Um, one of those two things. Obviously, Foxy has proved out to not be the best duelist player, but to be a good, a decent flex player here and kind of play like the KO stuff and everything like that. Obviously, he won't be as flexible as maybe somebody like Forsaken or something like that. Um, but he's going to do his job here and kind of play some of the more like flash initiator stuff, kind of like Ethan, maybe. Um, Mako is just going to be Mako because the best smokes player in the world. I don't think it's, I think it's him or Marved right now, but I think it's pretty clearly him uh, just because of the year Marved had last year. Um, and yeah, I think flashback is going to be solid. I think all the players here are going to be fairly good. I just do think they're going to take a step back in terms of chemistry and everything like that. And I think that's going to be the main issue here. Um, but I think it'll ultimately be a better outlook for them to be able to win tournaments. Everybody's like, oh, but they were getting third place or like fifth, sixth or third place very consistently. And that's better than every other team. And while that is true, you want to win as a player. You want to win events. You don't want to get fifth, sixth. You don't want to get third. You want to win the event. And I think that's what this move signifies. Um, obviously, Zest and RB are incredible players and will get picked up in the transfer window in mid after the like um, first tournament here. Honestly, picking them up on the team we just talked about, RRQ, could be a great move. I think DFM has the chance to do the funniest thing ever with picking them up in the T1 players up. Um, everything like that i think no team is off the table with those two players um but i do think it was the right move for drx to kind of move on from them and kind of start a new chapter here all right and now onto our last three teams here and this could win pacific tier these are the best of the best teams in pacific teams that i think could actually win pacific and potentially win tournaments this year um, maybe not so much the could win Pacific tier here, but definitely the could win champs tier could, uh, easily win some tournaments. Um, so we're going to start here at number three with team one. Now they had a weird off season, uh, bringing in Excurate, Izu and King initially, and then making a roster change, bringing in Rossi as well. So they ended up keeping Carpe and keeping him on the IGL role. So they now have a roster of Saya player, Exurate, Carpe, Rossi, and Izu. And it kind of left, leaves King and Zeta out in the dust. Or in the dust. I don't know what phrase to use there. But it's just not great for those two players. And also, I think it's not great for this team's upside. Um, I did like them keeping Carpe. I thought... He was more than good enough last year. Uh, his IGLing has looked so, so, so far, but it was his first tournament IGLing. He's relatively new to the game. Like, There's going to be some bumps in the road with that. I think they're probably going to lose some games that they shouldn't, kind of like they did last year. Um, Izu, I think, is a really good addition to this team. I really love his everything play pretty much for this team. He's playing Smokes, Initiator, all that kind of stuff. Um, Rossi's their one trick by Bermain, um, who has played really well. well. I've never seen him play like that before, um, like he did in the Freaka tournament. So there's definitely potential for that to fall off. But a player that I think will just continue to get better is Excurate. His chamber looked incredible outside of a couple moments that inexperience kind of got to him, where there was like he was playing it on Lotus. He put the TP up on the like wood box that just got changed to um to like the stone like the one on the right of a main or the left if you're the attackers um you can't play up there as chamber because they can just TP across rubble and kind of peek you from two sides but I think he kind of learned that I think he'll continue to learn here play other roles whether it be uh the harbor the brim um, anything else that this team needs they're going to kind of flip-flop rolls everywhere but i think that's fine like paper rex does it so why can't they um and yeah i think this team is going to be very good 
I just have some issues with their upside and consistency. Um, that, I mean, I think you'd probably get better with Zeta in here instead of Rossi or the King in here instead of Rossi, but I think there's some questions about King's like outside of the server stuff, whether it be like his attitude and everything like that. Um, but overall, I think this team will be extremely good, and I think there's a good chance that this was the best roster in terms of roles and just like personalities meshing. Then I'll put two and one up on the screen at the same time. So we're going to start with Paper X at one and Zeta at two. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, Paper X will start with bring in Monye instead of Jing. I do think is a downgrade. I do have worries about this team. Um, I think there is a chance I move them down into the could win Pacific tier um, and just have nobody in this could win champs tier um, because I do have them in my top tier in the world, but I might keep them where they are in terms of where they're ranked, but drop them down a tier. Um, I am still thinking about that. I'll decide when I put out the video whether I want to or not. Um, and yeah, I do think this team will figure out their roles. Mind Freaks looked pretty bad on the initiator. Um, Dubai, I think is a good piece here. I think he still kind of fits in this team with the sky and the killjoy stuff that he does kind of swapping with forsaken on that killjoy, being able to play the initiator when he needs to. Um, I think the best course of action for this roster, though, is to pick up a player midseason that can play stuff like Jing. Maybe somebody like, um, was it Jeremy or I think it was Dubstep that um, Team Secret Cup. I think he is a potential player that they could pick up instead of probably it would be Mind Freak, would be the odd man out. And I know that isn't a great move. I don't think people would like it mid-season, but it might be necessary. Um, I think just the way this team is structured, they will have a slow start. I can almost guarantee you um, they'll have a slow start, but I think they'll figure it out towards the end of the year and be the best team in Pacific. Um, now, there are questions about Munye and if he can play the duelist as well um he played it and looked fairly good but i do also just think he's better on the smokes role where he can play a little bit slower he also just might not be a fit in the team as a whole so there's a lot of questions with paper x but i think eventually they'll figure it out in the middle of the year i don't think their entire year is going to be bad i just think it might just be the start of it um, so i don't i don't think people should overreact to them potentially losing the um opening event here or even them losing Africa or them like like even if they bomb out of the first event i don't think people should overreact and say that paper x is done and this ranking is terrible is kind of my point here then onto zeta who made some good moves this offseason um Similar to DRX, they just needed to change, um, except these players were actually harming their uh, their opportunities to win. 10 just could not make a, a good decision to save his life, and Crow could not kill anybody to save his life. So those two are out. Hero Ron, um, who I was extremely high on in the offseason, I was banging the table for him. So glad he got picked up. Initially skeptical because... I thought he was just a Sentinel player, but being put on this like flex role, flash initiator, whatever you want to call it, um, he's looked so, so good. Um, I have a lot of faith in him. I think he'll be one of the best players in Pacific this year. Um, and then Yuren, who I don't really know right now. He didn't, like, I didn't really notice him too much when I watched the Zeta games at Red Bull. Um, I didn't think he was playing bad. I didn't think he was playing good. He's just kind of eh. And I think he'll kind of show more of what he is this year. Um, 
like nobody has any idea who he is uh, or nobody had any idea who he is going into Red Bull. And I think we didn't really learn too much. So you're going to have to figure that out during the season. Um, and then you have the core of Depp, Laz, and Sugar Zero here who are just so incredibly good. Um, I think they are... I don't know if they're properly rated because I think they're both underrated and overrated at the same time. Like there's some people who are big high on Zeta division and kind of think, I mean, actually, no, they're not overrated. I have them rated as some of the best players in Pacific here. Um, I think Laz's IGLing will continue to get better. I have faith in him. I've had a lot of faith in these players that didn't IGL before, but kind of picked it up last year, whether it be King in Americas, whether it be, um, I have a decent amount of faith in Magnum, honestly, and Sender. Um, in Carpe, I have faith. I have Laz. All right, Laz, I have faith. Russ, I think, will be a good IGL. Um, and yeah, overall, I just really, really like the SATA team. I think they have a lot of upside. I don't think they have a ton of flop potential. I think it'll less come in the individuals and more so how they play the game. But they also got a coaching change in here and could definitely turn everything around and be the best team in Pacific this year um, if everything goes right. So that's going to be my tier list. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did. Leave a comment um, on what you thought of the video and um, how you would rank these teams and what you thought of my rankings. Um, and with that, I'll see you guys in the next one for my world power rankings. And then I might do America's, or I might just do like player rankings after that. I don't know if I'll do it by region. Um, but if I don't, uh, go follow me on Twitter. Uh, link is in the description. And then you'll know whether or not I'm doing the video or if I'm just tweeting out the rankings. Um, so yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.